correspondent Jackie Averson stopped by the MGM for the Burr Biz Veteran Business Event and had a chance to talk with the genomic scientist to discuss his business model. I'm here with Yusef Enriquez with Indigenous AI. Hello, Yusef. Thank you for joining us. Pleasure. Well, can you tell our viewers a little, a little bit about who you are and what you do? We're a genomics company that's developing uh, solutions for the lack of diversity in clinical trials and building more efficacy around pharmaceutical drugs that affect our black and indigenous people of color. If you don't mind sharing with us a little bit of why you got into that. Yeah, I, I've been a science kid since I grew up. Um, I'm a, a combat medic, grew uh, in the military. I was a 91 Bravo okay. U.S. Army. And so when I got out of the military, I started having a lot of complications with drug products that I was taking that had no efficacy. And so my background, I'm a biochemist from Howard University. I ended up working for the FDA and started realizing that 95% of the drug trials were done in European white males. That means there's no women or minorities, African-American or Hispanic in the trials. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was having an adverse reaction to some of the drugs because they weren't working for me. And so my studies over the years have led me to the fact that we need to start developing our own clinical trials around minority women and other minority groups so that we can have better efficacious drugs that could benefit us. Based on the work that you're doing now, have you seen any progress? I mean, yeah, the future of precision medicine has really been uh, expedited because of COVID. Okay. As you know, unfortunately, uh, we were dying four times the rate, African Americans and minority were dying four times the rate as our white counterparts. Mm -hmm. And it's because of the underlying health disparities, the diabetes, hypertension, those are areas that have not been really fully funded through research. And so it was a big disparity when the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. So now we're starting to see a lot more um, diversity and inclusion requirements that still hasn't been mandated by FDA yet, but at least they're having the conversations around increasing more diversity in these trials so that we have the better, better efficacious drugs. So what is it that we can look forward to seeing from you and your company in the near future? Indigenous has uh, launched our own lab here in Washington, D.C., okay. actually at the old Walter Reed. The old Walter Reed was uh, gifted from the military, the Army, to uh, Children's National. And my genomic sequencing lab is now housed, which is kind of 22 years in reverse. I was stationed at, the, at Walter Reed, was a medic at Walter Reed, got treated at Walter Reed. And now I'm, I'm a research scientist at Walter Reed wow. doing research studies and recruiting uh, black and indigenous people of color within the DC, Maryland, Virginia area so that we can start doing more uh, drug discovery and looking at drug discovery products that could be beneficial to the, to the African-American diaspora. I heard that you guys have a new Geno initiative uh, in Africa. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, this week we were able to launch our 500,000 genome project, Pan-African Genome Project in South Africa. We're also building a lab in South Africa so that we could capitalize on harvesting some of the uh, African genome, which is also underrepresented in clinical trial. Less than 2% of the African genome are represented as long as well as the African American genome that's not represented. So uh, I felt compelled that we wanted to cover the diaspora, so I had to go to Africa because life started in Africa. And yeah. so we have just launched with our partner, Orem Institute mm -hmm. in South Africa, Cape Town, where we're gonna be doing this large uh, 500,000 genome initiative. And all the sequencing will be done on the continent and we're planning to build out our capacity there as well. So we're super excited to be doing a research initiative on both continents, both here in the U.S., in Washington, D.C., and our sister lab, which will be in South Africa, Cape Town. What is some of the work that you're doing to help veterans with PTSD? No, it's a good question. Um, so I started my career in research at the Department of Veteran Affairs, where I ran the first $100 million research project that looked at PTSD biomarkers and MTBI, uh, mild traumatic brain injury. And so that work led to me helping Mount Sinai Medical School develop a uh, patent around three biomarkers that could determine your predisposition to PTSD. So that biomarker patent was approved and I was able to take that out, uh, commercialize it and develop 
an assay that can help to look at your uh, predisposition to PTSD using a uh, blood test. And so there's currently a blood test being validated by the Department of Veteran Affairs that could help mitigate individuals that are predisposed, but also reduce the high rate of tw uh, 21 suicides per day. Would the blood test help them with soldiers that are going in active duty so they would know which ones would be more likely to? The goal is to validate this, this assay because we're looking at predisposition after the trauma has occurred. My goal is once we're able to identify what these genetic markers are, we'll be able to start looking at the future of our military service to start seeing which individual carry these particular traits just like you do with sickle cell, color blindness, so that I, I think that'll take the stigma down of individual feeling like something is wrong with them. Yeah. And it's now a genetic inherited condition that they may already have and the activation of that trauma is what led them into being uh, dysregulated some of those genes, which is more biological and hereditary instead of seeing, thinking that something is wrong with you. In your study, have you noticed that more individuals that are predisposed have parents or a parent that was a veteran? Great question. That's what I'm doing the uh, African Genome Study for, to compare it for individuals that have never left the continent and individuals that came here. As you know, there was a large amount of trauma that happened from that transport of Africans yeah. to, to out of the diaspora. Yes. So yes. if you think about some of even the diseases mm -hmm. and, uh, and hypertension, mm -hmm. that's from large intake of salt water mm -hmm. because we were at the bottom of a lot of the ships that's that crazy. during four or five months of transport. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing is we're really trying to identify what are some of the epigenetic changes over your time from Africa diaspora to the U.S., but also the epigenetic change that happened in military service? Absolutely. As you've gone through those different deployments, mm -hmm. women may have had a different reaction because of their background, mm -hmm. and also males may have had different reaction because of their genetic makeup mm -hmm. and the different the burn chemical pits disorder. and chemicals that they're being exposed in the environment. Because I know. Um, that one particular illness was that uh, related to the Agent Orange was spina bifida. So are you saying that it can be passed along? There has been research done on Holocaust survivors mm -hmm. and World Trade Center survivors mm -hmm. that are now seeing that some of these trauma mm -hmm. have been uh, transferred over to offspring. So we're going to look at that in the African American community mm -hmm. to see in the African diaspora to see if that is exactly what the case was as well. We actually have the ability for you to order your own genome sequencing wow. currently. So you can go on there previously like what you did with 23andMe. Okay. You can literally go on there and request your, um, your geno whole genome sequencing and we'll be performing that at the Walter Reed campus. And if you're in the area, stop by the Walter Reed campus. We, okay. have, the, we have the lab there and it's the first African-American genomic sequencing lab at uh, a prestigious lab, state-of-the-art lab, like uh, at the Walter Reed campus. Uh, thank you for opening up my mind because I had never heard of this before, so I appreciate you, you know, taking the opportunity to enlighten us. And I want to thank you again for coming out to sit with us, and you have a wonderful day, and thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you as well. Thanks for having me.